Awesome, Steve. Thanks so much for joining me today in the next edition of this Remote Sales Culture Interviews. Uh, we've spent time interviewing sales leaders from a number of different SaaS businesses. Um, Steve, I obviously know your background pretty well. For those who are either watching this for the first time or, or reading it, if you wouldn't mind just to start off by telling us a little bit more um, about your background and what it is you're working on uh, at the moment. Um, we'll all love it. We're hitting like the 20 plus mark in sales, but um, looking at the last 10 years, it's been sales leadership positions. Um, and those positions have been um, predominantly in sort of subscription SaaS um, organizations. Uh, ranging from sort of mid-market public companies through to uh, startups um, and um, somewhere in between. Um, where I am right now is I'm at EBSTA. So EBSTA is an exciting um, project. Uh, we're looking to, to scale over the next 12 to 24 months. Um, and we are very much focused on sort of revenue intelligence. How can we help sales businesses um, essentially improve what they're doing um, through driving more conversations with their clients and future clients. Awesome. Yeah, can't wait to unpack some of those areas a little bit more and, and learn a bit more about the, the kind of plan plans you have at Ebster. I mean, Steve, obviously, it's been an interesting year for all of us. <laughs> uh, a number of challenges, you know, whether you're in the sales game or not. I mean, just before we jump into the, the topics today of remote sales culture, I mean, if looking back at 2020, if you were to pick one professional highlight, you know, what, what would it be so far from this year? Yeah, I have to think about this because uh, in 2020, I've spanned two jobs, two quite different jobs as well, at, or different companies. Um, but I uh, I think joining EFSA has been from a professional perspective. I think that is, um, it represents all the things I like in, um, in the job, uh, which is, a challenge, a job that's going to, a business and a product and a service that um, really has strong value. So I think from a professional perspective, it's it's coming on board at Ebstar. <laughs> Personal, it's probably just getting through getting through 2020 pretty much unscathed. Um, so that's been that's been a positive. Um, but I guess from a personal challenge perspective, I have actually signed up to do a uh, sprint sprint triathlon early next year so that's maybe that's the uh the personal sort of first step that i'm looking to make no ways that's incredible uh is that you're going to be your first triathlon yeah which is why i've gone for the sprint version i definitely wouldn't be up for the uh <laughs> for olympic distance just yet where, where is that steve whereabouts will that be blenheim palace so it's at one of the uh sort of marquee marquee venues for uh for triathlons in the uk I can only wish you the best of luck uh, with that. Go get yeah, my head down. Go get into training. I mean, that makes sales software sales look like a walk in the park, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. As long as I get through the swim, that's the, that's the challenge. That's why I did it. You, you know, you, you have to challenge yourself all the time. Well, that's what my outlook on life. I can run. I can cycle. Swim in. That's the challenge. So uh, that's why I signed up to it. Absolutely. I mean, thinking about the, the the sales game now. Obviously, Steve, you've been you've you've been in the, in the space for for a long time. You've got some amazing experiences in in different industries, as you mentioned. You know, thinking about where sales teams are at right now and some of the challenges they're facing. Obviously, Ebster, the company that you've joined, you know, in the revenue intelligence space. There's a lot of sales software tools that sprung up in the last three to five years. What, in your opinion, and feel free to be really biased here but what is the, the the single sales software tool that you think most sales teams just can't be without right now i'm gonna i'll caveat with this because i think this is like we're using zoom as a platform to do this it's i think they put themselves or or any web conferencing um platform has to be a must you actually won't be able to do very much business at all without that so um putting that just as a hygiene factor. So um, outside of that, for me, it is anything that's going to allow you to run a consistent um, sales process and, and therefore create a consistent buying process that that is the biggest um, sort of area that I think. And so um, 
and that lends itself well to both what EBS is doing and some of the earlier, earlier, uh, earlier in the process tools. And that, that could be anything from sales loft to outreach, any of those sorts of people. But I have to say, like, um, EBSTA um, is and should be in the mix for any, any sales team to be able to um, do what they do better with data driven insights to, to essentially grow and, and hit the numbers that they want to hit. And I'd be curious. Yeah, for sure. But I'd, I'd be curious, you know, obviously the sales processes and a lot of sales playbooks have gone out the window this year. How have you kind of felt the effects of that? You know, obviously fairly new to the role at Ebster, you know, have you noticed a, a change in the landscape in terms of the clients that you're working with or how the tool has been used? Um, I guess the change in the landscape is we've got some excellent sort of examples of where um, companies have come into this period of time um, without ever really having to rely on data insights or, or it's like the uh, the traditional my reps will tell me they're feeling it they're seeing it they're touching it and and therefore we we that that's uh, what we're uh, built upon yeah then all of a sudden they haven't got the touch and the feel and they can't see things. And so all of a sudden people are scrambling on data and, and the companies that have done really well um, are the ones that have been able to use data insights and to be able to pivot their sales force and to be able to pivot pretty quickly. Um, so that's been super helpful for, for Epster because all of a sudden um, we become much more core to the way the uh, a business is working. And that rings true right across the, the whole sales process. So it's not just about Epster. Um, it is how can you interact with your sales team remotely? How can you... Right almost have those water cooler moments the, the the coffee moments how can you engage so anything that's going to help support that and so while i understand what you're saying about the sales processes some of them are going out the window fundamentally they shouldn't have changed it's just how you now have to use technology or use a slightly different approach to intersect that process well, that's that's the way i i look at it yeah absolutely right and i mean we've seen the rise of in adoption of a lot of uh, technologies across the space this this year, right? I mean, thinking about uh, your team at Ebster now, you know, you've obviously come into. I think you, you, your your first day was just before the lockdown, was it? Um, but you've obviously stepped into to the new role. Uh, very interesting circumstances to be picking up the reins uh, like that. I mean, how have your team kind of adapted to fully remote, and what are some of the kind of key changes you've seen? happen this year yeah so i i have got a team split between north america and 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 london so there's there's an immediate sort of geographical piece but that doesn't change whether we're in 2020 or not there's some little things that have changed in terms of how you help so um stand-ups like i'm not the first person to do those and i won't be the last like simple things like having a daily stand-up having a daily connection point with your with your sales team um, that's become really important, being able to um, consistently sort of document and talk and, and have a sort of an ongoing conversation with, mm -hmm. with any of your, your team has been, been really important. And also adopting some, some technologies to help, help use that. So whether that be sort of Confluence or uh, Notion or Slack or whatever it might be, um, some sort of platform that allows allows you to um, be able to run across the course of the day then it becomes like other things more important to make sure you've got fixed time with your team make sure that you've got these things that don't drop out of the diary and to make sure that um, and so that, I guess they're on the softer side of, of sort of just managing a team and you just got to you stay committed to that then there's other things that it's like how do you monitor and I don't mean monitor in a sort of um, to a stick way but how can you um, see how your team are handling themselves in client calls how can you coach how can you um, be able to monitor some of those things and they've become much more important for me as a sales leader and I suspect for most most sales leaders out there yeah I mean, curious to see as well in your experience this year how have you found the balance between you know being hands-on in the business and and, and coaching versus, I guess, 
still maintaining that strategic view and being on the business, looking at how you're going to hit the number? Yeah, I, there's sort of um, it's it's tougher. It's definitely tougher because if we take my personal approach to a lot of the coaching, as well as having fixed coaching, I'd always be sort of sat in amongst the team and be able to listen and and hear and and sort of a moment a call's finished, you sort of like talk to me about what happened and talk to me about the questions and and so on and so on. Um, so you lose that. So it's how do you how do you replace that? Um, so that has been a challenge. And then how do you kind of, those two hats, how do you think strategically? Um, you really have to break simple, breaking your day and your week up and really understanding what within your team, for me, it's been understanding, I can't do everything for them at all, all times. Sorry, I can't be there at all times for them sure um and so what meant is it's pick up the things that you think are going to be really important so for example one of my team um he's much more interested in the top of funnel stuff like he's he was an ae role and it's like trying so let's let's coach and develop the things he's really interested in at the top of the funnel and then i got another one that's like i don't really like if i could avoid top of funnel stuff i will I really want to focus on how do I ask better qualification questions and things like that. So all of a sudden I start to, okay, part of your development is let's focus in on the bits that you want to hone in on. We'll get to the other bits later. Yeah, that's really interesting. We've seen, I think some great examples you shared there around focusing in on specific priorities for each team member. I mean, we've had examples from, from so Anu put smart was, was saying just the other day around in the absence of being able to sit in amongst the team, um, as you just mentioned, he's got a virtual meeting room, which is just a, a kind of 10 hours a day Zoom link that's just open and a, kind of any of his team can just kind of drop in, uh, which I thought was quite a, a nice idea to kind of replicate that. Um, yeah, and interestingly, that's the sort of like with the CEO, the C our CEO sort of adopts that approach and it's just always on. And if you need to go in there and, and have a chat and because, and you just gate it, like you have your, like you know, when someone's there and you can admit them. And if you're doing something then you just drop the message, say, we'll come back, come back a bit later. I've not implemented it, but as the team grows, it's the sort of thing that you need to, to think about because as you're, we probably get onto it, but as you're onboarding people, um, not that I've had to onboard properly yet at Ebster, but it's, it's on the horizon. Um, you need a lot of hand-holding in that process. You need to be right there. You, you owe it to the person coming into your business to give them full support, to give them everything they possibly can to succeed. Um, so things like that are going to be super important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that feels like a, a natural segue to, to start thinking about onboarding. You know, as you say, I guess, particularly for the more junior hires who do need that that extra support, that extra, extra hand-holding in the early days. I mean, have you started thinking about what that onboarding process might look like for you as a business as we enter 2021? Definitely. So I, just to kind of, so historically, and certainly in bigger businesses, you might have an HR team. You might have people that are taking a lot of the, the onboarding slack um, up and you don't have that in smaller businesses. And so it's quite good anyone that's sort of joining a small business, be ready that you've got to get much more hands on. So thinking about, um, again, the scenario and situation we're in, some of the onboarding stuff can be almost done on the fly. And it's like, they raise a question, oh, let's get into that and we can go into that. But actually, um, that's not very efficient and, and it's almost impossible to do in, in, when we're working remotely. So... We have to be really prepared and we have to, if we think about um, onboarding and onboarding playbook or, or, in, or actually maybe even using like the playbook they're going to go into as part of the onboarding process, um, that just needs to cover everything. So we've been thinking and I've been working through what are all the things that someone might need um, and making sure it's documented. It's not going to be everything, but it should be, also the template as they roll through um, the onboarding process. I was talking to a, a, 
another sort of VP of sales whose background is in sort of SDR management um, not so long ago. And they were just saying, yeah, I, I, I will go through and even sort of tell them, why do we do outbound sales? Like who like spoon feed everything. And I think that that's important. I think that that's why, that's why I've been thinking about onboarding for next year. Um, and you can tweak that if you're bringing on a really senior sales exec compared to someone just starting out, but in your mind thinking, I need to have everything. There's just, there's always an answer. And then they, they come to me or come to some other person in the business for more color. For sure. I, I, I'm curious to go a bit deeper into that, Steve. What, you know, what are the kind of factors in your mind that you're thinking about as you're developing that? You know, is it for you as a business, is it about speed to value? So is it, you know, bring, getting them delivering value as, as fast as possible? You know, is it, is it thinking more about retention and giving them an amazing experience when they first join your team? so they don't drop out you know within 6 to 12 months or, or is it a combination of both it has, i think it has to be a combination of both you it's an expensive process going through hiring whether that's just your own time and resource um, or if you're using third parties to help you go through that 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 process so you want to get it right more often than not um, so you also then want them up to that ramp up time. So I think mm. every every sales leader in, in the world will be like, if I can reduce my ramp up time, I'm I'm winning. Um, so it is about reducing that. Um, at the same time, giving because if you've hired right in the first place, and I appreciate you can't do it every time, but if you've hired right in the first place, you should be committed to making them a success. Mm. And so um, you want them to stay on. You want them to get advocates of your brand and your business you want to be able to develop them as as people you also want them to be looking after the next generation of people coming through and so yeah. it, because, like i mean this is nothing new um but i think again probably also because of the size of our business we haven't got the bandwidth or the money just to kind of throw just throw stuff at it so we want to get it mm -hmm. want to get it right and get it right um yeah first time yeah, it makes, makes a lot of sense. I mean, you touched on it there around the in brand. I mean, uh, I think that's kind of the, the third element. You know, if you've got speed to value as number one, you've got retention as number two. I think the kind of third in that trifecta is then how do you build an amazing employee brand where, you know, obviously Epson has been around a while. It's it's it's, it's well known in the, in the sales space. How do you make it somewhere where people just really aspire to work there? Um, well, if you're thinking about, um, so the way, where we look, can we offer them the right benefits and compensation for working here? That's, that's, that's important. And to make sure that, that that aligns, can you meet um, development and motivation? Like not everyone will stick around for 12, 18 months or three years or four years or whatever, but while they're right. there, make sure the you're giving something to them at the same time as they're giving something back to you. And so I think when you've got those two pieces um, working well, you naturally will have this sort of motivated, a more motivated team. And then by the time they're leaving, it's a natural evolution as opposed to like this forced, I'm, I'm either about to go on a pip because I'm not doing well or I keep smashing this and I'm not getting the, the money or the career progression or whatever it, I might, I might be. So I'm, I'm off. Um, and look, the, you'd be naive to say you can satisfy everyone's needs, but if more often than not, you are, you get that brand advocacy. People want to work for you. They want to work with their team. They want They believe in what you're, you're doing as a business. And so that's what we're working really hard on at, at, at Ebster. We've actually got people, like I'm one of the newest, newest people. There's been a lot of the people I'm working with and the team I'm working with have been here for multiple years. So it's it's doing something right on on that level. Yeah, it's great to hear. I think it it, it, it you've hit the nail on the head. We had a uh, 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 former head of sales from Invision, and uh, you know Ryan was an advocate of remote sales culture long before <laughs> it was kind of forced upon the rest of us. Um, but he talked quite a lot last week to me around this concept of your story. So every time every new hire he makes, he, he says to them, you know, in the first day in, in the organization, what's your story going to be? How can I help you create an amazing story for yourself and your career? And 
I think that's quite a nice way to quite a nice long term view to look at at talent development. And it also helps. It also helps people get out of some of the um, stereotypes sort of responses, like the, the uh, I just I want training because I want to develop. Like develop to what? What? What's what's the goal? It's I want to be here. I want to earn loads of money. For what? Why? Like what? What is it you're trying to do? And it, I think that story is is a nice nice way of of um, taking people on that journey to get them to think actually if I think a little bit harder about this okay that's my real motivation now I'm prepared to kind of get stuck into into that and and in our case can to help them absolutely I mean obviously it's it's not all been plain sailing this year and obviously unique experience set for you coming straight into a new role during during the middle of the pandemic I think you know what are you seeing in some of the key challenges for, for sales teams right now yeah i think um some of the challenges will be um anyone that doesn't have a proper like doesn't have a sort of documented sales process and doesn't sort of align their whole um their training their development their customer experience everything aligns to a sort of a solid solid process and also the systems will come unstuck pretty quickly and, and probably already have come un, unstuck um, because um, they haven't got anything to fall back on and, and sort of know that they're going through and, and doing things things the right yeah. way. And I think that's a challenge. There's other things that are around people might be selling into markets that are just dying um, and having a really, really tough time. Like at Ebster, we're really fortunate because we're like industry agnostic. Like we can just we can just move with wherever um, sort of needs us. Um, but for any sales um, tech or, or sort of sales enablement or, or like the markets that we're in, it's likely to do well right now because the sales teams need support. Sales leaders need to be able to support their sales teams to go out and do what job they, they can do. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so I think that's the, they're, the, they're the core ones. Um, but um, other challenges are that there's a much more conservative buyer out there. I mean, when you think about um, people won't know exactly how they're going to perform in 2021. So straight away, they're going to be more cautious. It's going to be like, do we really need this? Do I need to buy this? Can we, can we survive in the status quo? Um, so even if they do still buy, Pro, um, sales cycles are going to slow down and mm. for sales teams if you're not prepared for that or if you're not budgeted that or i mean it's going to create terrible pressures um, within sales teams so we we're lucky we don't we don't have that Ebster. um we might have some decisions that slow down a little bit but more generally it's not not as big a challenge for us yeah it's a, it's a beautiful thing to be industry agnostic as you said and be able to remain agile in terms of who you're your ICP and your target target audiences, and I guess that the, the the other thing is that people might have to talking about ICP. Um, we can see it from talking to our clients and our prospects that they have to um, potentially change their ICP and who that is. And if you don't have data to support that, and if you don't have tools like Ebster to be able to give you some data insights into that, that's that's a hard thing to do. Um, and so there's going to be a whole heap of sales leaders out there that are hoping, and I, and I use the word hope, that they're going to kind of make some traction early on in, in 2021. Um, but someone always said to me, hope is not a great strategy. So uh, <laughs> um, we'll see how that, I love that. that pans out. Yeah, it's, it's uh, very true words. I mean, you, you touched there as well on, on the measurement side. You know, have you been thinking about the measurement of your team and and its and your team's performance differently this year and heading into twenty twenty one? Yeah, well, I guess I've come into the business, so I guess naturally I've changed the thinking a little bit because I'm I'm a, a new person in C. Um, I have to have a a view on sort of metrics or, or like you need metrics to kind of manage too, um, but I think where 
sort of where I'm trying to change or move the business towards is this like it's it's about conversations like our business is built on conversations have more conversations at the top that flows down through in into the business Mm -hmm. so we really want to kind of double down on that for, for internally at Ebster so we're very much about how quickly can we have conversations, have conversations with the right people, um, how many of those conversations can we fan out across a business. So we're very much thinking in those, or I'm thinking about in those those terms. Once it comes into sort of funnel and funnel metrics, they're kind of, we're not doing anything completely um, different, sort of conversation to demo and demo to opportunities and and, and to close and, and, and so on. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're, we're much more focused, as I say. Like, so when we think about it from um, say a technology perspective or from a reporting perspective, it's like, what do we need to be able to um, help the team have more conversations? Um, yeah. And then what do we need um, to be able to monitor those conversations um, and then know um, at what the inflection points what are the bits that we need to kind of look at and and move and change and coach against and 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 so on yeah and i guess uh practicing what you preach by by using your own technology i imagine absolutely um engagement like going back to some of the things we just talked about and and how things are a bit tougher um uh, there'll be a lot of businesses out there that look and feel the same as each other so what's different it's going to be the experience in, in a lot of instances. Mm-hmm. So using Ebstar, we can make sure that we're talking to the right people, making sure that we've got the right people for, for our business, like to make sure we've got the right people in the conversation with us. Ebstar allows us to do that immediately. Like we, we talk about it around here. We understand the DNA of a deal. We understand what needs to happen within a deal to get a positive outcome. Mm. And we can see that through Ebster. So we do more of it and it becomes a virtuous circle. It's like we do more of that, we win more and so on and so on and so on. So that's that's um, where we're really utilizing um, our own technology to help through that whole process. Yeah, it's exciting times. Yeah, exactly right. I think it's, it's a, a, a very frequently used word in the industry at the moment. I was listening to a podcast on the way in this morning, probably a conversation for, for another day, but we're talking about, you know, what does the future of a salesperson look like when actually AI gets to a a level where it can actually, it can line up which calls you need to make next. And then it can actually make the recommendations, as you say, building on the Ebster approach to say, yeah, these are the types of warmers that you should use in this next conversation. This is the type of interaction that would help the deal uh, move along to the next stage. You know, do we just become the salespeople kind of uh, (laughs) order takers or... I don't know if you've got any perspectives on that, particularly in the remote world that we're living in at the moment. Yeah, I think like there's going to be, there's some products and services that are going to be commodified. If they're not already commoditized, they're going to be commoditized. So, and they're going to have super fast sales cycles. And so uh, that would lend itself well to um, sort of where machine, machine learning should really be just in an enhancement of the, of the, yeah. of the experience. And so you still will need people in that flow um, and in that process, machine learning or AI will, in th- it should just give you more data, more things and get your timing and closer and closer to being um, and better and better. Yeah. But you're always going like, to, if you've got a complex, if you've got a complex service, if you've got to have um, some deep, deep kind of, conversation there's always going to be salespeople there but you might see more and more businesses as say commoditizing and they're just they are just moving moving much more quickly low touch um with a whole bunch of things but i mean i had an example the other day someone was talking to me um and they're they're a sales enablement tool and we hadn't spoken for ages and she quickly talked about I was talking about a triathlon. She was talking about swimming. She brought swimming up straight away. I was like, okay, like interesting. And of course she could have written an old fashioned note about that. But I asked her, like, did you go back and listen to our call before you came on this call? She goes, yeah. Um, And it also picked out some words for me. So it was like, 
that is a use. I think that is a good and positive use of whether it's AI or, or technology or machine learning. Yeah. So all of a sudden, my experience has been enriched because he's immediately talking to me about something that is personal to me. And it, in theory, she was listening last time. Now, she wasn't actually listening. The machine was listening. She just used that really sensibly. That's fine. I mean... I'm a salesperson. I, I I don't mind that. I'm shallow yeah. with these things, but but that to me is a good example, and that, that I think we could all learn from things like that. It's there's still a human at the other end, right? Uh, at the other end of the call, and it's I guess just machine enhanced or machine augmented sales. Yeah, I um, there's a guy out there called Jerry Hill who works for a, a company called Connect and Sell. So they're mm-hmm. they're using technology to. Um, really ramp up um, outbound call prospecting and he talks about this a lot and and i and i it aligns with what i believe too is technology is not there to take over from people it is there to enhance and and there's a great place for it to enhance that it might mean you become capital efficient it might mean that you don't need as many people to do the job but you still need people and you need and if you can pay them well and pay them handsomely for doing a great job um that's good and technology is just making that perform better i think that's that's probably where we go like the sales teams might shrink a little bit but they'll be mm. they'll be they'll be performing um better yeah this is similar or if not higher output it's going to be an interesting 18 months, two years for sure. Um, I mean, you, you picked on there focusing on the individual and actually, you know, remaining conscious, I guess, of the people side of, of your team. You know, I'll be curious to get your your opinion, thinking about measurement of your team above and beyond just, just KPIs and performance metrics. Um, you know, thinking about other factors like motivation levels, um, actual skill sets, uh, within your team members, you know, w- would you find it valuable to receive a, a regular pulse um, on on your team and and how they're progressing? Yeah, I think because what you're talking about, are some of the things that are just um, without a framework in place, or are just hard to to monitor. Um, they're the sorts of things that can all of a sudden hit you can. Uh, hit you around the face if you're not close enough to your team members it's like these things have been bubbling away underneath you're focusing on conversations around um pipeline performance well done you've hit your right. number etc cetera, etc cetera. um and then also they say well actually i really um want a complete career change because my beliefs are xyz oh whatever i'm, I'm sort of taking it to the extreme but they're the sort of things sure. as a manager um, that you could easily miss um, and take time and effort and energy and um, uh, you want to have those conversations with your with your team um, and if all of a sudden they start to slip for one reason or another yeah you've got a bit of a hole absolutely yeah absolutely I mean obviously Steve it's been a really interesting year um, you know looking ahead to, to 2021 I guess if there's kind of one thing that you're thinking about doing differently heading into next year, yeah, how, how would you summarize that? One thing I'm doing differently. Um, oh, there's so many things I'm going to be like looking at, like, because we're going to be scaling properly next year. And I think that, so what am I going to be doing differently? Um, we're going to be paying much closer attention to uh how we develop people so our end goal we've got to we've got to hit hit some numbers like any other business we want to grow those numbers significantly um we're going to have to build a bigger team going back to one of the points you made earlier what will i be um about we've got to make sure that onboarding process is great we don't want to have to go through this too often and so on so mm-hmm. i think the one thing i gonna be doing differently is 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 that onboarding journey i'm making sure that, that onboarding journey is um nailed down and followed and it can iterate of course but but to make sure that when somebody joins ebster it's not even about the first three months because it's pretty easy enough to make the first three months good uh it's the three to 12 months we want to make um yeah exceptional um and that's i think that's the bit and i'm 
whether it's because I've got more people around me in the past or different functions to support me, I'd have been guilty of, of not making sure every single T is crossed and I is dotted on that journey. And I think that's, that's, that's the big one for me this year, next year. Yeah. Awesome. I think that's huge. Uh, I think you hit the nail on the head and, and making sure that it's, it's a continuous path, that it's not just uh, 30, 60, 90 days, and then they're left to figure out the rest out for themselves on the job. Um, but that sounds like a, a really, uh, really solid approach. Final question uh, for our conversation today, Steve, is the, is the big one that we've all been waiting for. So uh, Salesforce or Star Wars? Oh, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to have to say Salesforce, even though I do love Star Wars. The reason why is because our business is built off the back of Salesforce. So uh, um, while uh, we are making Salesforce much better, that uh, that much I will say, we are making it much better. Um, oh, that's a tough one. Brilliant so, answer. I'm watching Mandalorian at the moment, so it's... <laughs> I love it. It's a tough one. That's class. Look, Steve, I've really enjoyed the conversation. I mean, for those uh, out there watching or listening or reading... Where can they find out more about yourself or Ebster? Yeah, so Ebster is ebster.com. Um, everyone's more than welcome to come and, and check us out, particularly as a, as a sales leader. And for personal, um, I'm on LinkedIn and it's LinkedIn um, uh, for slash Steve Ed, and, and you'll be able to find me, find me there or Steve Ed at ebster.com. There's lots of ways you'll be able to contact me and always open for a conversation. Awesome, Steve. I've really enjoyed ours today and I look forward to doing it again soon. Thank you, Matt.